of very different perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a Pure Theory Creations Entertainment Network presents a live, interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. And we welcome you to the Fatal 4-Way here live on ON TV. We certainly appreciate you taking time. <laughs> Appreciate you taking time. We are off and running here this yeah, we week. Are. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I wanted to say thank you to UQ for, for stepping in on the last episode as the host of the show. I certainly appreciate it. I knew it, it was in good hands, but it's good to have the four of us all back here in Lake Orion, Michigan, along with Brian Bob, Sean Grugel, Hollywood Q. I'm Jason Klaus. We have a lot to talk about here, gentlemen, and... We're going to kick things off by looking at the clash at the castle that is going to take place t uh, tomorrow afternoon from uh, Glasgow, Scotland. I don't know how you guys feel about these clash at the castle events, but like last year was the inaugural one um, over was in Wales, right? Or somewhere in the United Kingdom, I, yeah, I, I feel I like. This year it's in Scotland. Does this show have its own feel? Do, do you feel is this becoming a a big time marquee event in 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 your opinion? Q, we'll start with you. Uh, well, you know, I, I I think so. I mean, it's only the second one. We'll see how this one goes. But uh, to me, I feel like it's a big it's a big deal. But you got a lot of the uh, the Scottish and European stars in there now, and they're really uh shining. And you have you. I mean, Drew McIntyre is one of the biggest ones you have. Right. So uh, I believe that this is definitely going to be a marquee. Probably not a not going to ease into no f top five or right. anything like that. But absolutely, this show is a is is almost a must have at, at this time, at this moment. With this being the um, another international pay per view event, Brian, I, I feel like um, what we saw in. France for backlash really set the bar yeah. and we saw that on full full display at the last pay-per-view where they were trying to match that that energy is this going to be a trend with especially with these international uh, you know these pay-per-view events can we outdo what what Leon did for, for backlash? They set that bar extremely high. That's going to be a hard one to beat. I think it would all really honestly depend on the size of the building, acoustics, and stuff like that. If you could, but there's there's matches and enough wrestlers on there that have enough hometown push that you could see that crowd wise. Very good point, and we can look no further than the main event here, Sean, because uh, Drew McIntyre, who is from Scotland, is going to challenge uh, Damian Priest for the uh, <coughs> World Heavyweight Championship. On paper, how big of how big of a deal is having uh, McIntyre in the main event here? And this is going to be on the heels of him being inducted into the Scottish Pro Wrestling Hall, Hall of Fame. So, I mean... Having him in the spot is what's going to be the measuring stick, I feel like, as to the success of this show. What, would you agree? Oh, I agree. And I don't think you're going to hear any CM Punk chants at uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's all going to be all about Drew. I think it's going to be about uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. You know, I think those are going to be your biggest pops of the night. Don't forget Piper. Uh, pardon me? Piper, too. Oh, Piper. Yeah, maybe. I, I think probably because she's such a heel. That she, I mean, she might receive a hometown ovation, but I think as that match goes, I think you'll probably see her. You know, uh, they'll, they'll probably lay back a little bit on her because um, everyone loves Bailey. You know, um, you were asking though, does it make a difference to me if it's in Scotland? I don't, I don't care. The thing that makes a difference for me is that's earlier and I could stay up and actually watch this. <laughs> so. uh, with this being uh, broadcast live from Scotland, it's going to be a 2 p.m. Uh, uh, start time, 1 p.m. for the kickoff show uh, over on Peacock. So 
Uh, real quick, um, McIntyre, this is kind of written for him, right? This is a storybook ending. Like, we, we sat here on the show after WrestleMania. At least I did. Like, that... What what went down with him at WrestleMania, winning the world title, only to be cashed in on by Damian Priest because of everything with CM Punk, really took away from what I feel like he really... Drew McIntyre should be one of your, your pillar stars, right? I mean, this guy's got everything. He's got the good luck. He's, he's talented in the ring. He's entertaining with, with his promos, which is a... That stands out nowadays, right? Because you, we see all these vignettes and these promos, and you're like, this is very robotic. You don't get that with, with McIntyre, right, Brian? No, no, I, absolutely not. I mean, and he's shown that a lot lately from when he was laying across the announcer's table and seeming like he's going off the cuff even. And he seems like he does better in promo work when he does off the cuff or mm -hmm. stuff. I, I totally agree. Uh, lo looking at the rest of this card, and, and there is a very heavy um, international influence in terms of who got booked on this card, right? Because you look at yeah. the, the triple threat uh, t tag team match for the women's uh, titles, Bianca Belair and Jake Cargill against Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, and Elba and Dawn. <coughs> Excuse me. Can Elba and Dawn wouldn't be here on this card if they weren't weren't in Glasgow, right? Right. Uh, I, I think they have really missed a ball on those two. I think they're excellent. They were excellent in NXT, um, but they need a lot of work, and there's no way they're going to put them over Bianca or Jade in this match. No, the, Bianca and Jade have to win this, right, Q? I mean, if, if, if for nothing else, they are the stars of this match, but also... You need to establish some sort of credibility and, and substantialness to the Women's Tag Team Championship overall. Would, would you agree with that? Yes, and I, I'm actually happy that, that they added uh, Shayna and Zoe to it because at least they have some wins under their belt. And they were, they were, un, they were uh, uh, contenders mm -hmm. for a while now. Like, they've been uh, number one contenders for... A while and they never got their shot like we you even had teams jump the line over them and they already had their number one con their, their title shot just waiting on I'm waiting on them so I'm glad they they, they they inserted them because the the, the spooky witches they uh <laughs> there's no way <laughs> that the spooky witches were going to win this in a 2v2 match they they don't even have wins under their belts, and that that and that was, that was the one problem I had with the uh, the lineup on uh, a lot of the international people on here that they should at least gave them a few wins going into this show. Therefore, they don't seem so entitled just because of their nationality. When when WWE. <laughs> Sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> when WWE goes into a sp specific market, and we're seeing this with the card here, with the inclusion of all these international born stars, um, you you got to wonder who's going to have that hometown moment. But it's not a guarantee anymore, right, Sean? Because you look at when they're in, in the States, let's say, and I'll use <laughs> when you you know, when they went to Oklahoma, you would think that Jim Ross would get the big, you know, hometown welcome. But instead, he got the snoppy out of them in that town more <laughs> often than not. So it's not a guarantee that the hometown hero is going to go over. You look at Alba and Don, you look at uh, Piper Niven, and then you look at McIntyre. Is McIntyre the only one who has that big hometown moment with, with the way this card is set up? He, he has... <clears throat> He, he, he is who you would think is going to have that big hometown moment. Me personally, Damian Priest has been doing one heck of a job carrying this belt since he's gotten it. He's done everything he's can to get it over. He's not over as far as I'm concerned. But I really think what you're going to see, just my opinion, always my opinion, is we're going to see CM Punk show up, distract Drew, and Drew is going to get screwed over in his hometown. Oh, man. 
<laughs> I'm close. Yeah. I, I say CM Punk does show up, but I think he inadvertently helps Drew win the title and then holds it over him like, yeah, you won. Again, another asterisk because I was there just to kind of build up that feud even more. Uh, that's going to be a tough one. That's a tough one. It, it's it's, it's kind of hard to say because I'm looking at the future now because, uh, okay, so we got money in the bank after this. If you have Drew holding this title after this win, if he gets it, then if CM Punk is ready by SummerSlam, you still can't do that match because Gunther is the number one contender. Right. right. So, we, right. So, so you almost have like a uh, – it's like, I don't know what's going to happen here. This this card is a little bit more unpredictable than it seems, you know, because we can easily say this person, this person, this person. But if, when you look into the future and see how things are going to line up, it's kind of hard to say. For sure. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how those those particular matches wind up just from the hometown re reaction again. Leon France set the bar for for a crowd for a pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, moving on in this card, uh, and find, you know, the Intercontinental Championship <laughs> in WWE, I'm, I'm glad, and I never thought I would say this. I am starting to appreciate Sami Zayn's reign as Intercontinental Champion. And, and the reason why I say that is... Write that down. I, or I know. <laughs> the reason why I say that is this championship, I felt for a long time, one of the most prestigious titles in all of wrestling. The biggest names in the history of this business have held that title. And I started to really look at Sami Zayn from an in-ring as a performer and what his, his potential is because he does have it. Even though I am not a fan of his, and even though I'm, he's not, he will probably never be on my Mount Rushmore of anything, I appreciate his position in this as Chad Gable is going to, I feel like, is on the cusp. Like, this is going to be his big breakout. And if it wasn't for this story with Sami Zayn that has the general wrestling fan very invested in this, the Intercontinental Championship is now back in the spotlight for the first time, and I feel like Chad Gable is going to be the one that really restores the credibility to that title that we saw with the likes of Mr. Perfect, with the likes of Bret the Hitman Hart. Chad Gable is that guy. Brian, what is your opinion on this? Does he win the title at, 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 at the Clash of the Castle? Yeah, I definitely think I think it's time that he's going he's gonna to pull it off. I'm just, what's going to happen outside the ring with Otis and the possibility of the Creed brothers, that I don't know. But I think when it's all said and done, I think Gable will have the belt. Also, I'm going to make it a challenge of mine to make sure I make up a Mount Rushmore that you put Sami Zayn on. <laughs> I'm sure you will, pal. <laughs> I sure. I, good luck with that. <laughs> it's coming. I don't discount your your capability, but <laughs> it's going for that one. Yeah, it's going to have to be something good. Uh, Sean, what what's your take on this? Sami Zayn, Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship. Simple. Chad Gable goes over. That's because Otis and uh, what's her name, uh, Maxine, Maxine and Tazawa, they've been playing the game the whole time, and they're going to turn full heel on Sami and lay him out. Oh, oh wow. What's your take? Man, I don't know. That's okay. All right. <laughs> let's let's uh let's, let's let's set this up here. All right. Um I want I want Chad Gable to win this match and I want him to win this title. And eventually I believe he really is going to get this title even if it's not on a uh, Saturday. But uh I what I see playing out is we have to have the moment with Otis. We have to have that moment, and, and, and this is really going to play into, like, if Chad Gable does not get this title, it's going to be because of Otis. But that'll be able to set up something else down the line because this is his fifth shot at this title, his fifth shot. 
And if he don't win on Saturday, most fans are probably like, okay, well, that, that, that's it. That's it for Chad. Like, we got to move on. But with the story being as hot as it is, one of the hottest stories on Raw right. with Otis, that you can even push this to a, another match either on Raw or at Money in the Bank where Chad get that title. You can easily do that, but you have to have that moment with Otis. Because if you watch the past few Monday Night Raws, when Otis almost clocked Chad, man, the crowd sound like they did when Sami Zayn was about to attack Roman. Yeah. So that you, you got one of those moments. You cannot blow that moment right there with Otis. Otis gets over. He gets over. Like I said on that last show, Otis was... He was screwed over by the pandemic. You remember how over he got with Mandy, his his peach, you know, <laughs> how he got over. Man, he's getting over again. Money in the this bank winner. Chance. Money in the bank winner. He lost all that. And I love that they refer that he they referenced that. It. Yep, they did it on wrong. They keep they, they they keep all that storytelling right there. He lost all of that. You gotta have that moment with Otis. I don't even if he wins or not, I just need to see the moment. Okay. Throughout our phone number, Jason. Yeah, I was just about to. If you want to, if you have have an opinion <laughs> on this card, a prediction, or anything of the sort, uh, the number is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we encourage you to call in and be a part of the conversation. Um, and the last match here, r- real quick, it's going to be Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles in an I Quit match. We haven't seen an I Quit match here in in WWE in, in a minute, Q. Uh, who who goes over in this? Yeah, it's got to be Cody. Yeah. Yeah, I hate the stipulation, man. Now, I'm not a fan of I quit matches. Nope. It, it, you don't, you're not going to see the baby's face say I quit unless AJ goes out into the crowd and gets Cody's mom and say, you know what, I'm going to put her in a Styles class. You better say I quit before I drop her on her head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the... the the undisputed WWE Championship is going to be on the line here. Brian, uh, as far as storytelling goes, how do you f- – what's wrong? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> I was just about to say, I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to go with AJ. Only because they're making such a big deal out of Cody's mom coming on the plane with him. Every time a baby face loses an I Quit match, it always has something to do with a family – relative or friend having an edge i go i mean it doesn't even have to be aj we could see the oc we could see the bloodline who's saying that they still got cody in line anybody could go out there and grab mama Rhodes <laughs> and, get, and get cody to <laughs> say I quit. There's been a, a lot of spe- a lot of speculation as to the future of AJ Styles. You know, whether when you know his his future with WWE. A lot of the word retirement is being thrown thrown out there. Um, is this going to be his swan song? Is this going to be the way he goes out, or or does he pull the the upset, much like Brian was saying? It'll be a rematch. It'll be a Mama Rhodes on a pole match. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, no, you know, with with this silent merger of uh, TNA, I think we can see AJ going back to TNA and uh, finishing out his days where he started. That's okay. That's that's a good transition here um, because there's a. Well, first of all, we there's you want to t- t- talk about the headlines in the last week and a half or so. A lot of focus has been on the contract status of Ricochet. Um, by all by all accounts, the first things that came out were he he gave his notice. He's not going to renew when it, when it uh, when it officially expired. I believe in August they said uh, from from one report. But now, as recently as three days ago, I'm seeing that. His exit from WWE is not a foregone thing here. Sean, what, what's your take on this? Is, is this an effort to keep the spotlight on Ricochet to make him a sought after on, you know, in the minds of the IWC for sure of a free agent? He's getting paid too well. He's, he's there with his girlfriend. I don't think, I, I think the story is the anticipation, is he going to leave or not? And that's what's going to draw more interest to Ricochet. You know, Ricochet's got to use some of that money to buy a personality. 
because he's not going to get over in the WWE. Uh, if he goes to AEW, he might be okay because he's buried by all the other crap personalities. But uh, I, I really think Ricochet is going to be sticking around. I don't care what anybody says. What's your take on this, Brian? I think he's gone. Yeah. I think we won't see him on television again. You, you just want to disagree with me on everything today. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> loved I love Ricochet in NXT. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned that. And yeah. I've not been a fan of his at all. I, Like you said, zero personality. Yeah. We'll completely agree with that. Um, there's so many people that follow that same routine, personality, everything he does. Nobody seems to pop. I don't think he'll pop in AEW. I think if he stays, I think it's just going to build a jealousy between him and Samantha. Her being a bigger star than what he is, and with her not even wrestling. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> right. hey. about that. I, I think he's gone, and I don't think we'll see him on television again. He brings up an interesting point. The Always. Fact, the, Always. The fact that the Samantha Irvin ricochet dynamic is on par with S.A. Rios and Lita. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. <laughs> but look at the position that, that that they're in, and he brings up a great point, you know what I'm saying? So, okay, he, he leaves, he goes to AEW, or he goes to some New Japan or, or, or whatever. Why is it that he did not resonate with WWE? Okay. Does he need a complete overhaul? For one, I agree with the NXT version of Ricochet was a lot better. Um, once Vince McMahon got his hands on him, mm. you know, <laughs> take it down, <laughs> take it down. <laughs> well, I, I think a Vince McMahon ricochet absolutely sucks. But uh, um, Tell me how we, really s- <laughs> we, you see, I've seen improvement in Ricochet under Triple H in the ring. I agree with the personality thing. Like, he, he definitely needs to get a better personality. But in the ring, Ricochet got it. He's got it. Um, in AEW, he's going to get lost by other in-ring talent because the things that Ricochet can do in the ring, I don't see n- not too many other people in WWE that can do that stuff. So he's holding back. He goes to AEW. You got half the roster that can do stuff like that. You got all the Pentas and the Phoenixes and all those guys. Every He's going to get lost. And he already doesn't have a personality. Now he's going to get lost in ring as well. I don't think AEW is the right fit. So I was actually going to say, you know, I would rather see him go to New Japan. Yeah. Where he can actually stand out. Do and they, they need help. <laughs> I mean, it's got it's got to be an option here, but another option, and this could really he could be a catalyst here if they do this right. Um, and again, if you have a a um, an opinion, you have s- something else you want to talk about here on the show. We encourage you to be uh, to call in and be a part of the conversation. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Um, a lot of a lot of anticipation with this crossover between WWE and TNA. What if they they positioned Ricochet as kind of an unofficial catalyst between the two promotions? He's leaving WWE, but he's going to to TNA. A lot of uh, you know with Jordan Grace and her appearance on NXT, and then her you know the match that they had at Battleground. Um, there's a lot of hope like that like WWE has their own version of the forbidden door right yeah. um, and now earlier this week we got word that Matt Hardy is being uh, rumored to be a part of the NXT show you know and this is on the heels of him challenging for the TNA World Championship at against all odds which is happening this weekend actually tonight isn't it, it, it is it tonight I believe so. yeah um, so, Sean, I'll, I'll ask you first: Is this is this going to be the start of an actual, you know, crossover collaboration between two s- separate or organizations? I think so. They announced Jordan Grace is defending her knockouts title against a mystery opponent. Is it going to be Roxanne Perez? Potentially. Could it be Kalani Jordan? <laughs> Potentially. Um, Do you see Kalani's uh, promo? She was so nervous, that poor young oh, thing. Yeah, she's, she's um, that, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I really think Jordan Grace uh, 
what was the catalyst and moving forward we're going to see more crossover absolutely um i wouldn't be shocked to see uh joe henry show up on this pay-per-view uh clash at the castle mm. I, I would actually love to see that what do you think here uh, brian do you do you see a long-term plan with this crossover co collaboration with with tna or is this going to be a short-term thing are they testing the waters for a jordan uh, jordan grace to make the transition over to wwe what do you think is going to be the the long term here I, I think the plan is and i think what we'll see is a full-on collaboration between the two companies definitely looking forward to it like uh, there's like so many matches that we could see but uh uh i wouldn't say with jordan grace i gotta acknowledge the fact that she had her earring completely ripped out of her ear against roxanne perez that thing looked nasty yeah, that and she continued through that match without even showing it All right makes her kind of a ba don't it oh yeah she's tough <laughs> so is matt hardy let's let's fo focus on on matt hardy here for, for a second there's been a lot of speculation that he's coming to nxt to make this big announcement that could p potentially if rumor and innuendo is true could lead to the return of the hardy boys under the WWE um, umbrella. Is this what's happening? Is he going in at, as his own ambassador for TNA? What, what do you see here from Matt Hardy's appearance on, on NXT? I think it's a good thing. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, and I know Jeff's contract is coming up s soon, I believe. I know that he had like injury time added on to his, but uh, <clears throat> I, I think we need to see both Hardys in their career right here in WWE, you know, I, I say right here, like, <laughs> like <we're, laughs> but right in WWE, I want to see them in their, in their careers in the right place. Right. But uh, right. yeah, I believe this whole Matt Hardy uh, thing, it's going to be a long collaboration. It's going to be a long relationship between the two companies. And I think Matt Hardy is definitely, uh, he, he's taking advantage of it. He said he wants to, to, uh, not only show up for NXT, but show up for you know WWE. Now, even Moose, he uh, expressed interest interest in uh, coming over and doing some things. But I believe it's going to be more of a TNA NXT thing more than a WWE TNA thing. So, I, and I think that fits better. I I have to agree with that, especially as NXT is going to be moving to a new network um, very shortly here they're going to have to do something to draw additional eyeballs to make that transition because yeah. anybody who knows anything knows how, you know, once you're established on one network to move to a completely new network, it's a challenge to get your fan base to follow you over there because they've become accustomed to this and we are very, we are very much a creature of habit, you know, primarily speaking as, as humans. So. They're going to have to do something to, to put t TNA under a very big, bright spotlight. And as they start to build new stars, marquee stars, I mean, they're going to have to. If, if, because yeah. TNA, when you when you match up uh, NXT with TNA, I almost have to give the advantage to TNA, you know, mm -hmm. from, from, from top to bottom. So that could be... Uh, something very special on the horizon. And speaking of very special on the horizon, after we run this time out, we are going to look at our favorite world or our, our favorite our favorite title belts in the history of professional wrestling in the Mount Rushmore segment. We're going to do the indie roundup, all that and more when Fatal Four Way returns live here on ON TV. <laughs> Did you hear that noise? That's right, the 21st annual Big Rig Gig is coming to Orion Township Friday, August 2nd from 5 to 9. Save the date for an evening full of trucks, tractors, bulldozers, construction equipment, police cars, fire trucks, and more. Grab your cameras to capture a night to remember with the people you'll never forget. From seeing vehicles of all shapes and sizes used around town, to the experience of climbing on and through the many machines, honking the horn, and meeting different staff members who work the vehicles daily, 
This event is a wide load of laughs, all for free. Located at Friendship Park on the corner of Clarkston and Baldwin Roads in Orion Township, be there and join other families to make a strong and healthy community to share the excitement today, tomorrow, and for future generations to come. For more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, this is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. Welcome back to the Fatal 4-Way, live here on ONTV, along with the Stan Lee of PFC, Brian Balfe, Multiple time Michigan Indie Wrestling Hall of Famer Le uh, <laughs> Levi Blue, <laughs> Sean Grugel, Hollywood Q, Quadell Edwards. I'm Jason Klaus. I certainly appreciate you tuning in here this week. Sean, let's, uh, let's look at some of the upcoming events uh, along the independence circuit. Indie Roundup. All right, the Indie Roundup. No, no cool graphic today? Joe has failed me. Okay. Um, there it <laughs> there is. There it is. Oh, there. All right. Focus on. All right. So uh, Saturday, June the 14th at 7 o'clock, Superior Championship Wrestling presents Christmas in June at the Modern Skate Park, 1500 North Stevenson Highway in Royal Oak, Michigan. We talked about this last time, but this is just such a cool match. We got John T. Keith and Fox 2's Brandon Hudson and Rob Wolchek versus Chuck Cold and Father Marquise. Mm. So... We've gone from school teachers to reporters going into the ring. I love it. All right. And let's see. June. Okay. This one's a three day event. It's for the Pro Wrestling All Stars at the Lakeside Mall. It is Taco Fest. And oh. there is various shows happening on these three days. You can go to michigantacofiesta.com to get those times. Here's a fun one, and I have to edit myself because I can't say its proper name. <laughs> June 22nd, Juggalo Championship Wrestling, presented by ICP, presents Lunacy at the Harpo's Concert Theater, 14238 Harper Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. The main event, this is crazy, it's an electrified cage match with Willie Mack versus Josh Bishop. On this show, you will see notable names such as Nick Gage, Shaggy Two Dope, Violent J, w, former WWE star Simon Gotch, Madman Pondo, James Storm, Zach Gowan, and Colt Cabana. You can get more information on this show at psychopathicrecords.com. Saturday, June 22nd, uh, Extreme Intense Championship Wrestling presents Bustin' Loose. It's a fan appreciation show. It's at the Premier Event Center at 2400 S. Nunley in Clinton Township. Uh, you got uh, TNA stars Rhino and Jack Price. Check out XICW.com for more details on that one. And the very last one I got, June 23rd, Capital Pro Wrestling. They present the Great Lakes Professional Wrestling Showcase at the Fledge, 1300 Eureka Street in Lansing, Michigan. The main event is Jimmy the Hype Shawin versus Keith Cream, and that is your Indie Roundup. Indie, indie Roundup. <laughs> <laughs> Theme song now. <laughs> uh, thank you for that report, Sean. Uh, we encourage you to uh, call and be a part of the conversation. 810-331-2829, uh, lines are open right now. Q, as you monitor the, um, the the chat room real quick, anything standing out to you before we go into the Mount Rushmore segment? Sure, one more thing on Ricochet here. We got uh, our good buddy Eric Cherry, who says, Ricochet needs to be put in a tag team with a partner who has some personality, which I mean, 
I can or see a manager. Them. Or get a manager. Yeah. What yeah. about Ricochet with Wesley? Mm. That wouldn't be a bad team. That wouldn't be a bad team. Do you think but Wesley has personality? I think he does. I think he's over. I, I think, also think if Wesley has anybody around him, it's going to be now that TNA is Another back. Rascals. Rascals. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see them guys so, back together. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm real partial to OTM, and I think they would absolutely kill Ricochet and Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah. Obviously, I, I tick members of our studio audience <laughs> off as they have just <laughs> left. <laughs> Anything else newsworthy? Yeah, how about, uh, okay, TJ Brewer says. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he says, hi, how you doing? No, okay, he says, uh, we will see a Clash of the Castle screw job with Drew getting screwed over to make the story go to the next PLE. That's kind of what I said. Yeah, that's kind of what I got to change my mind. I can't agree with TJ. That's yeah, not right. That. <laughs> Showing the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and anything else? No, that's it. All right. Uh, Brian, let's send it over to you with this week's Mount Rushmore segment. All right. So we have our Mount Rushmore of coolest looking belt designs. Hey, there it's me. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So I have. The Ring of Honor world title on mine. Um, <laughs> Sorry. It was supposed to be the heavyweight title, but I'm my, not. That's my bad. It's all right. I take it's very points. similar, but it's cooler than that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I also have the AEW women's world title. You can see right there, it's got the three plates. There's actually two more along the sides. Thing was basically just like plated, plated completely. <laughs> uh, my favorite belt of all time is the NXT United Kingdom belt. It's got like, the griffin on one side. It's got this, like, the horse on the other side. I love that belt. And then I went, what I feel like everyone says, big gold. Well, you're, not me, but it's me neither. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> if you had to pick another one. No. One, I mean, you want to talk about iconic In world it, title belts. Big gold. You have, you have to mention big gold for sure. For sure. All right, yeah, great picks. I mean, great I picks, they're they're picks. all great. I I did not appreciate not a single WWE belt. I right. <laughs> um, I did not appreciate the the UK title until later on. You know, because I didn't follow the product. I didn't watch the product. Um, but you that's look Gunther's at the belt. Right? Yeah. Gunther's yeah. belt. That's yeah. Gunther's belt. I'm just right trying to figure out who Liam McAllister is. All right. Me too. I saw that too, and I was like, who is that? <laughs> I did not see <laughs> that until after I made <laughs> oh, the wow. graphic. That's I Kevin McAllister's older brother? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sean, what's, uh, what's your picks here for your Mount Rushmore? All right. Well, mine's uh, obviously the NXT North American title. Love that belt. WCW television title. The Lucha Underground title I felt was very groundbreaking with the replaceable plates. I think they called it the Gift of the Gods title at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool a really cool gimmick. And then the original Big Time Wrestling United States title, you really can't see because he's been cut off there, but that is the original Sheik, uh, Ed Farhat Sr. Don't ever call him Ed, even when you get to heaven, because he will cut you like a... <laughs> he will carve you up. But that belt to me is iconic. Uh, XICW, they, create, they recreated that title. I actually got to hold that title. I wanted to go home with that title. I wanted to sleep with that title. But, you know, my wife had an issue with that. So, Understandable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, you, you went outside the box with, with your picks, and I appreciate that. Um, the North American title really has on when they first brought that out i'm like holy mackerel that is an updated version of the wwe championship that the iron sheik won yep and i really appreciated the big green yeah yeah yep yep and uh you know lucha on lucha underground so much you know promise and potential as to what that could have been yep. and i appreciate the the, the tie-in with that the WCW t Television Championship, it is, I mean, it's one of the, you know, better looking belts that WCW had. And the the U.S. title, man, that's that's wrestling history right yep. there, so I can appreciate now, that. Now, the, the red WCW Television title was the one I really liked, the one that Steve Austin held. Yeah. But. All right, well, my picks, I... You know, I focus very much on my childhood with, with, with my picks. Um, the WWF World Championship that Hogan, the Hogan 86 belt, as they call it, 
Uh, one of my favorite, you know, that is probably my all-time favorite belt, along with the classic Intercontinental Championship, the classic Tag Team Championship, which I really appreciate the new belts that, that they have now that kind of pay homage yeah. to, to that design. And I really appreciated the WCW United States, you know, t uh, title. It was different. It was, it just has a old school feel to it, just the way it was laid out. So I, uh, that's my childhood. Three out of the four is my childhood. You know, those are the belts I was, I was raised on and they will always be sentimental fa favorites. If you have a, um, your favorite, um, you know, championship belt designs or, or things of this nature. You want to talk about the clash at the castle. You want to talk about the ricochet thing. You want to talk about anything. We encourage you to call in the show, uh, 810-331-2829. Now, I have can a we, Get cute? No, I don't want to. You might want. You have one? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I'll call in. Yeah, give it a number. Yeah. All right. We saved the main event for for last. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So here's my. Okay. So I went with the AEW heavyweight title because I love the the plated design that they they have going there, and I mean it was it was so good that somebody had to steal it from Jericho. So. Uh, so I, I, oh, yeah. I, you remember that? Yep. So I love that. Um, then I went with the WWE World Title from '98 to 2002, the title that uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin made famous. And I, I remember the day that he was presented with that title in '98, and it was a great moment for me. I was a big Stone Cold fan, and I and I believe that big blue belt it was. Underrated because everybody talks about the winged eagle. So mm -hmm. I go with the blue eagle. Um, the also the classic, well not classic classic, but uh, the my classic intercontinental white strap title that I remember Razor Ramon wearing back in the day. Then Goldust got it and turned to gold. Right. Shawn Michaels have the white. Shawn Michaels, yep. Shawn Michaels, yep. And then I went with Big Gold and. One thing about Big Gold is I really appreciate it now because uh, I remember going to SummerSlam and I almost put the new world heavyweight title on my list because uh, when I went to SummerSlam and I seen that title live, I was like, man, it looks a lot better in person. Mm -hmm. But then I seen somebody with the Big Gold as well and I was like, yep, still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, go ahead. Um, see, we got time. Yeah. Worst belt. Oh, good one. Um, the intercont the Oval Intercontinental Championship. Oh, I don't like that one either. No, that uh, one was dog uh, awful, awful, awful. I got two, man. I, I mean, there's plenty, oh, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, if I could have two, the WWF Divas title, the Butterfly. Yep, that was your <laughs> mind. I hated that one, and I hated the the Spartan Gladiator WWF tag team. Tag team, team those belts. are terrible too. I hated those. those. Yep. That would probably be number three on mine. The one that you didn't say that I would put on that list too is the twenty four seven belt. Twenty four seven. Yeah, that thing is terrible. Yeah. I agree with that. The original NXT Championship Heavyweight Championship was just, it was, yeah, yeah, with the letters that were kind of the. I, I didn't yeah, care I for that one fan. at all. Yeah, I know it was a gimmick. I hated the uh, hardcore title too. Just I, I yeah. know, but it was just a falling apart old WWE yeah. heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eagle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was alright with that one. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was fun. it was fun. But one I really hated was uh, I know it, it was a specialty belt, but uh, the greatest Royal Rumble that uh, Braun Strowman won when he won mm. that big green mm. ugly yeah. WWE belt. Oh my God! I he still has that. <laughs> The longest champion. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I went ahead and deleted that out of my brain because it was, you know, we, I wish they would do something with the, with the, with the title that Cody Rhodes has, you know, the WWE championship, you know, we talked about the world heavyweight title and how it was, it was paying homage to big gold. And when I first saw that title, I was like, man, that stands out. That's different. Yeah. Because WWE especially, all of their belts looked the same. It was right. just a different yeah. color strap on it. You know what I mean? So I, I, I did not, when they started to incorporate, um, who's calling us from Albuquerque, New Mexico? 
Welcome to Fatal Four Way. I know, I know what this is. Welcome to Fatal Four Way. You are live on. Oh, they hung up. That was about your car's <laughs> extended warranty. It sir. was. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I wanted to get their their take on this. Um, but now with the with the specific brands to of Raw and SmackDown, you're starting to see, you know, Raw belts look like this, and the SmackDown belts are the more traditional, what we have been used to, the mm. the cookie cutter ones. Yeah. Uh, so if they could do something to revamp the SmackDown titles, g give it its own identity, but give it a new a new look, a new presentation. Brian, were were you one that that would sit down and 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 draw? Because you are an artist mm -hmm. and, and a very good one. I don't mind telling you. Uh, I don't mind hearing it. <laughs> have you sat down, you know, as a kid and and designed, you know, ch championship belts? You know what's weird? I honestly can't remember any incidents where I ever did. Like I remember drawing pro wrestlers, like made up ones that I wanted to see and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't really remember ever just trying to design a title. It sounds fun though. Yeah, for, <laughs> for sure. I think I might. You can do it tonight. on the game. You can do it on a video game now. Well, yeah. yeah. We did that as kids. Remember that Nintendo game, Tag Team Wrestling? It was horrible. Just a horrible, horrible Nintendo game. But we actually designed our own titles when we would play that game. Whoever won. <laughs> and those belts nice. were made out of cardboard and magic marker. Loved it. Oh, we got a caller? We do have a caller. Uh, welcome to Fatal 4-Way. Uh, who do we have on the air? Old toilet bowl seat head Jeff Hoskey's on the line. <laughs> Hang it up. <laughs> Jeff Hoskey, welcome to Fatal 4-Way, pal. Thanks for, for taking time to call in the show. What's on your mind? Well, I wanted to touch on two things. One, I wanted to talk okay, about thanks. Ricochet real quick. Okay. Um, I was curious to see what people thought. Would he still be as memorable if he went back to his old gimmick as Prince Puma on the indie scene, or should he just stay as Ricochet? We've kind of alluded. And the other... Okay, go go ahead. Well, I was going to say, um, I know you guys talked about it a little bit. I, I jumped, I caught the conversation real late. I do apologize. You might have already talked about it. But, but I was going to say, what about him possibly opening the gates between Teen A a little bit farther if he signs with Teen A, comes back to NXT for the little tournament on Tuesday, and continues to bounce back and forth between the two? We we did kind of allude to that earlier in in the program. Uh, w he brings up a good question here. If Ricochet was to go back to his original gimmick that brought him to the dance, so 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 to speak, would that be something that could give him a a, a new sense, a new a new path here? No, people already know who Ricochet is. You know, it was like. Uh you know, when A Kid became Axiom in NXT, they're making jokes about him being, hey, there's an A Kid in a mask, you know. People know who Ricochet is. Prince Puma was Lucha Underground. It was a great character for, for that time, but he's had national exposure as Ricochet. He's not gonna get any more popular as Prince Puma. There's not a, a snowball's chance in hell about that. So, if it's not going back to his roots, Brian, is there anything Ricochet can do to really become the main event, you know, the main event big name superstar? Or is this just where he's at and this is where he's going to be mid card at, at best because he's just not resonating with the mainstream fans? It's hard to count out anybody because you know one good storyline is all it really takes to kick somebody up a notch. Right. And maybe even unlock something. I mean, I mean look look at Stone Cold. He was the taskmaster. <coughs> and it just took that one little ring thing master. that kicked Yeah, Ringmaster, not Taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong person. Uh, but it just took that and like the King of the Ring and he just skyrocketed. A little heel turn against Samantha Irwin could do wonders. <sighs> I just don't see Ricochet having it in him though. Yeah. Because I think there's certain people that they're going to plateau at a certain point. Not everybody can be a... I mean, they're all superstars. They made it to the big show. Right. 
but to make it to that next level, not everybody has that, and I don't think Ricochet has it. What, what do you think, your kill? I think he can. Liar. But <laughs> 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 I think he can, but it's going to take a lot. It's really going to take him developing some type of edge, you know, because all we know of him is, you know, being that flippy guy, like the superhero uh, guy that lands like Spider-Man. And But we need some type of edge after that, you know, like, and it's going to be all in his character. And then the booking is also got to back him up as well, because it's not just Ricochet. He, he still has to be booked. So if they develop something... I mean, you, look, WWE is world class. I mean, you, you're working with some of the best people, you know, behind the scenes that will help you develop in your career. So I believe that's they really have to work with this man because on his own, he's not going to do it. I mean, scripted promos, he sucks. But if you just give him free, a little bit free range with some bullet points and really help him with those bullet points, Maybe the right feud, when they book him in the right feud, a story will help him. Look, I'm looking at Chad Gable. Like, you say Stone Cold, look at Chad Gable. He's, he was not over as Shorty G. <laughs> no, nobody cares about Shorty G. And look how long he's been the Kurt Angle version of Chad Gable. Now, under Vince McMahon, that, that didn't even get over. Right. But now, he still has the same character but now he has a different character development now that he went heel he has a whole story going on which is the best thing on the show so what if something like that happens with ricochet it can, it's possible okay so what what else do, did you want to t talk about here jeff well i actually want to follow up right after what q said now looking at somebody that used to be part of the wwe Zack Ryder, now Matt Cardona, his complete demeanor, he has full range of his character and everything after, and I think he's done some of his best work after he left WWE. Can you see Ricochet standing out like that and then possibly getting looked at to go big league? What do you think here? You're, you're shaking your head no immediately. Again, I don't think so because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're gonna go book Ricochet, people are expecting Ricochet. Matt Cardona, was able to develop his character because he had the freedom to do so. Ricochet's never gonna be able to do that under a WWE contract. If he was to leave and go out into the Indies because of his personality alone, he doesn't have the personality of a Matt Cardona. I don't think he'll ever ever be able to flip flop like he did. You know, I don't think he really needs that much personality out on the Indies. No, he's, in the Indies the he's gonna be known so. as yeah. former WWE star. Right. Yeah, but to, I think what Jeff is alluding to is to go out, make a name for himself, and then get pulled back into the Fed. I don't think if there's no change, kind of like a Drew. Yeah, there's there's Drew, not there's not Cody going to Rhodes, be yeah. you know a, a contract for him. It, it's I mean it's it's a good question, but it does draw the comparisons to the Drew McIntyre's, to the Cody Rhodes, the ones who left or were released from WWE, went out Matt Cardona to some degree, obviously not on the level of Rhodes and, and McIntyre. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like with Ricochet, the lack of personality is really what's going to be the thing that that keeps him from headlining R WrestleMania. At this point, headlining Fastlane, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, he just doesn't have it. If he would, and that's not to take anything away from his ability in the ring because he can, you know, he can do all the flips and flops and everything, and that's great and everything. But psychologically, I, I just cannot buy into this guy. Now, if you if you give me a more realistic pr presentation and you mask his his weaknesses, which is his lack of promo, his lack of personality, you get this is where we need to incorporate, reintroduce the concept of managers. We need those. And, I mean, you look no further than Paul Heyman and it is when done right, it can still be a thing in this day and age. Ricochet is one of these guys that would very much benefit from having a manager and a complete overhaul or put him in a group such as Hurt Business. I was going to say Hurt Business yeah. 2.0 and you give him MVP 
Yes. There you go. I mean, right that there. Is, MVP. That, with, I, was, yeah. I was thinking it as you were saying it. I'm like, that would be one of the few things. Have him the high flyer of that group, and I could see him taking off as a heel, basically. Right. Yeah, so, something. Um, any, anything else, Jeff, As in, in terms of, uh, I mean, we've talked about the ricochet thing here. Is there anything else that you want to talk about r- real quick? We have a few more minutes here. One quick one. Um, I want to call you out on your little Mount Rushmore because I know one in particular that you loved for years that uh, you left off your list. That would be the old U.S. spinner belt. I know how much you love that one. You are lucky that we are live on television and that there are children in the live studio audience because I almost went into full-blown promo mode. You want to talk about one of the worst times. You know what? That supersedes my, my original pick. The spinner belt, especially the WWE championship that Cena had, the, and, and they carried on for years after Cena had won the title. The grossest title of all time. I I felt that thing was more of a slap in the face of the (laughs) legacy of that champion. Damn you, Hoski, (laughs) for getting me down this rabbit hole, pal. What were you going to say, Brian? Shut me up. I was almost going to say I almost said it when we were naming off our worst titles. Yeah, between that yeah. and I mean, rated, I did, the rated R I did Superstar the other night, right. on oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad one. I, all the spinner belts. Yeah. <laughs> I, right. I don't need the most prestigious title in all in the history of professional wrestling to look like a hubcap <laughs> on some rented out Cadillac. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Thanks for calling in, Jeff. Good to hear from you. He's gone. And that's the sign <laughs> of a phone hanging up right there. <laughs> me and Q also said, out of all the specialty titles that they made for people, the only one that I actually do like is Daniel Bryan's The Wooden Eco Belt. More than The Smoking Skull. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I, like I was not a big fan of The really? Smoking Skull. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready for another rant? <laughs> no, I'm not. You know, I, 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 I just didn't care for it, really. But The Million Dollar Belt, The Million Dollar yeah. Title. Oh, that, that was that was one. a really good. That's another one. That's a good. That's one of my favorite specialty belts. What about you? Do you have real quick? Do you have a, a specialty title that? Man, I feel all. Oh, fire that one out. You know that Power Trip Heavyweight Championship was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it really. But, was. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the million dollar belt was uh, that. That was my favorite specialty belt. As we start to wind this down, we want to take a minute here. I appreciate uh, all of you for tuning in here this week and celebrating c- coming into Father's Day weekend. We want to wish a very happy Father's Day to you gentlemen and to everybody watching at home or on the go, as it were. And we ask you to check out our website for all the latest uh <laughs> All the latest news and information in and around the PFC Network. It is at pfcnetwork.net. For Brian Ball, for Sean Grugel, for Hollywood Q, I'm Jason Klaus. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other, and we'll see you in two weeks for the next installment of Fatal Four Way live here on ONTV. Brian.